Kelly King K. Kelly King K. Call Kelly King K. Kelly King K. It's first aid with Kelly Kincaid on Sway in the Morning. All right, all right. You guys know how it is. Every week we like to do this as much as we can. Kelly Kincaid is here is, uh, and always concerned about health issues that um, or medical things that could benefit us in our lives and help improve them and make them even better. Good morning, Kelly Kincaid. Good morning, Sway. Good morning, citizens. Happy summer. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly, for bringing that <laughs> breath of fresh air up in here. Absolutely. Um, you didn't come by yourself. What, what is our subject today? What are we Absolutely. speaking on? Absolutely. We're going to talk about blood donorship. And, you know, we recently just um, uh, had World Sickle Cell Day mm -hmm. on June 19th. And, you know, um, Blood Donor Month is focused uh, the month of January. But donating blood is something that's very important year round because we don't have a lot of people who don't donate blood. And we need that because it's a lot of people with different conditions that need blood transfusion. So I wanted to bring someone from the Red Cross. We have Dr. Kathleen Grimma from the Red Cross. She's a uh, physician, but she's a medical officer for American Red Cross. Good morning, Dr. Grimma. Good morning, Kelly. So we're talking about blood donorship. You know, and I said that uh, I can just speak just from the human side because I'm not a physician. I'm not a medical uh, officer. And you can speak on that. Why is it a lack of blood donor donors across the country? And it's very important. It's extremely important. I, uh, You know, what people say often is that nobody ever asks them to donate. And I, I think when you talk to people who do donate, they have a personal connection. They'll tell you they had a family member who had cancer. They need a lot of blood transfusions. Or maybe, you know, they, they had an experience themselves. Maybe a lot of people who have accidents, you know, or trauma get massive amounts of blood. And then they realize how important it is. And I think people don't think, if I need blood, maybe it won't be there. They expect it to be there. So about 3% of the U.S. population donates blood, and it's not enough. And, you know, a lot of people who donate blood, I guess when I think about the American Red Cross and donating blood, people think, well, I get paid for it. Uh -huh. You know, and I think that it is a bigger uh, platform than just for the money. You yeah. know, people are losing their lives because we don't have enough of it. it yeah. People may think with the needles, is it scary? You know, sure. is it an easy process? What is the process for donating blood? You know, it is a pretty easy process, actually. So uh, we try to make it very easy in terms of how how you can access the Red Cross sites. There's an app, and there's uh, all sorts of uh, uh, websites, redcrossblood.org or 1-800-RED-CROSS. But when, you can actually do a lot of the health history online, and it's called Rapid Pass, and you can bring your barcode with you and scan it in. And after that, uh, they do a little physical, uh, blood pressure, pulse temperature. They prick your finger for your hemoglobin because they don't want to draw anemic donors. And then once you uh, start donating blood, it's about eight to 10 minutes, sometimes quicker. You get, you're done. And then, and then you get cookies. You get cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Grimmer, let me ask you this. How do you actually screen who it is that's donating blood? Um, how do you know that their blood is even donatable? Well, uh, so there's a, that's a very good question. There's a lot of levels of screening in terms of donors. So, so donor eligibility, are you eligible to donate? Uh -huh. And there's a series of questions which uh, people can look at on red, uh, redcrossblood.org and go to the eligibility section. You can go through everything we're asking. Mm -hmm. We ask about medications. We ask about travel, tattoos, uh, all sorts of things that might result in a deferral before you get there. So you can check that out. And then uh, once we make sure that you're not anemic because uh, some people want to donate, but their counts are too low. Uh -huh. Once you donate, that blood is tested you know, for, you know, uh, what we call transfusion transmitted diseases. So it would be HIV, okay. hepatitis C, hepatitis B, uh, things that shock us, you probably, West Nile virus, things like that. Things like that, okay. You know, we have Dr. Kathleen Grimma, for, she's a medical officer for a Red Cross, uh, American Red Cross. You know, when we start talking about this, I find it interesting, as I started to do this health segment, a lot of people don't know their blood type. Yeah. You know, I'm AB positive, and I know you, we were talking. That's you great. was like, "That's that is a, a rare one because the breakdown the blood types we have 
O. Right. A, B. Right. A, and B. Right. And it's either positive or negative. Right. A lot of people just don't know it. And, and you just, when you go to the doctor, that's not a test that you just automatically get. And that's it's very right. important to know your blood type. It, it's helpful. And, and sometimes people say they don't want to donate because they don't know their type. Right. But, but that isn't a barrier to donation. And if you donate blood, some, some places will actually type you at the site. And uh, once you donate, you get a donor card in the mail that has your blood type on it. So uh, they're all important. I mean, we tend to, so about 15% of the population is RH negative. That's the negative, okay. right? What on does there. that mean, RH negative? That just means that you're missing, um, uh, you're missing one of the blood groups on your red cell. So there's A, B, and O, mm -hmm. but there's also this whole system so that uh, people who were missing that RH, uh, uh, anti we call them antigens, but if you're mm -hmm. RH negative, then women who get pregnant can have in the before it was well known, the babies in utero would develop uh, what uh, a, a terrible anemia. Okay. Be and so now we it's checked for and people are screened for it and monitored throughout their pregnancies. But Rh negative people are about fifteen percent of the population. Uh -huh. If someone's in the hospital and they're Rh negative, they need Rh negative units. So they run out first. Okay, they run out first. Dr. Grimm is here. We also have another special guest we're going to speak to in momentarily. Uh, this is First Aid with Kelly Kincaid. If you're interested in donating blood or you have questions or even receiving blood that's been donated, 888-742-3345. Give us a call. And now, more First Aid with Kelly Kincaid on Shade 45. Right, sway in the morning. Uh, we got the medical officer for Red Cross is here, Dr. Kathleen Grimmer. We're talking about blood donations. Yes, and also we're uh, acknowledging on June 19th, uh, we had World Sickle Cell Day. Uh -huh. You know, Sway, sickle cell affects hundred about a hundred thousand people in the United States and 90,000 of them are African-American you know celebrities like T. Boz, uh -huh. Tian Watkins, Prodigy uh -huh. from Mob Deep, uh, Miles Davis, Tiki Bar Barber, celebrities who have or who had sickle cell anemia and I wanted to uh, actually include our guest Blaze Eppinger to the phone uh, to our conversation because he just was uh, featured in uh, the week publication and he's really I love his story because he has sickle cell anemia and he really is a big advocate for sickle cell anemia and making you know this uh, condition uh, making more of awareness of it good morning blaze good morning good morning how you doing good you know I enjoyed reading your article and you talking about you know this camp that you work uh, work with and the kids that you work with uh, mm -hmm. So t let's tell us about your story. When were you uh, diagnosed with sickle cell? Were you born with it? You know, what was that? How was it growing up with sickle cell? I was diagnosed at birth with sickle cell disease. I have type SS. Um, I work with the uh, Sickle Cell Foundation of Georgia. That's here in Atlanta. We offer uh, a lot of different uh, unique opportunities for people with sickle cell disease. We're right now working on a camp that we have called Camp New Hope. And that's a camp. It's a week long for uh, kids with sickle cell. But um, me growing up, um, at first it was a, a battle, you know, just learning the ins and outs of the condition that I have, um, learning what I can do and learning about my limitations as a person, and also trying to break down those limitations um, one day at a time. Um, I spent many nights and many days um, in the hospital. Um, but I just feel it made me stronger. And, uh, like, I know that sounds very cliche, but literally who I am today is because of sickle cell. Right. And so we're talking about um, blood, uh, war blood donation, and now we're talking about sickle cell. What, what's the what's the union of, of these things? Why are sickle cell anemia people and, and blood non blood donors important? What's, what's the connection on that, Dr. Grimma? Well, I, I think Blaze could tell you that uh, sickle cell anemia uh, individuals are transfusion dependent to mm -hmm. a certain, to, to a, a large extent. And in order to keep their disease sort of from being debilitating and causing pain crisis and other uh, serious illnesses, 
they're frequently transfused. And uh, blood, blood types are inherited. So you're A, B. You must have had a parent who was A and a parent who was B. But there's all sorts of other things that are on the red cell that are inherited. And African Americans have particular blood types, extensive typing, whereas most of the blood donors are Caucasian. So Caucasian donors can be transfused to, I mean, everybody can be transfused to everybody. But if you're transfused frequently, you'll make antibodies to some of the antigens that you don't have on your red cells, which is why in sickle cell disease, we try and select uh, typed units for, for people who need to be transfused frequently. And that's why the African-American community is so essential uh, when it comes to supporting uh, transfusion in sickle cell patients. Blaze, how you doing? This is Sway. Thank you for being on the show. Crazy, I'm talking this way. Hey, how's it going, bro? Uh, it's going great. One of the things you said that stuck out to me is that you had to, once you was found out that you had sickle cell, that you had to learn your limitations. Uh, mm -hmm. If you were speaking to a young kid uh, out out in the world who found out that they were diagnosed with sickle cell, what advice would you give them to function in their everyday life? Um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of adversity, but with that adversity comes strength and it comes growth as a person. You know, um, as a kid, you don't know why you have these limitations. You don't know why you can't be as active as other people. You don't know why, you you know, you're, you're young and you don't really know the ins and outs of sickle cell. But I would just say, you know, don't let people define you. Don't let the disease define you. And, and it's, it's, it's really a mental thing. Your body is going to follow what you tell it. So if you tell yourself that you can do things and you tell yourself that you can achieve things and, and exceed and excel at things, then you'll be able to do it. Don't um, see it as a crutch. You don't see it as, you know, uh, uh, a no. You know, just, just find a way to find that yes. And that's what I've been doing. Like um, with the sickle cell, I've grown closer to the sickle cell community. And like the doctors were saying, um, I need blood all the time. Um, as a child, I was on chronic blood transfusions. Um, I was getting like two units every month. Um, I eventually got off of that because with blood, as they may be able to tell you, comes the possibility of iron overload. Um, but now as an adult, let's say my hemoglobin drops drastically. I need blood, and that's why it's important. Like they were saying that that blood is there because if it's not, you know, I can't get better. And there have been times where the blood has not been present. So like they were saying, blood donation, like without blood, I don't think I even would be here today. Mm -hmm. So for the people that that have that, you know, uh, the needle or I don't have the time. Like they were saying, it's only eight to 10 minutes. You know what I'm saying? We binge watch TV longer than that. We have meals longer than that. So if you can just take eight to 10 minutes, get that blood, you you can change somebody's life. We're we're on social media longer than eight, eight to 10 minutes. So that time, yes, look, yes, you can yes. scroll up and scroll down and donate right. blood <laughs> at the same time. If if there was someone that's on the on the in the middle, just kind of deciding whether or not they should donate, what would you tell them being that you're dependent on these blood transfusions? I would tell them don't think about the act of the blood donation, but think about where it's going to go and who it's going to reach. <laughs> Um, with me, um, just even being with Red Cross and I'm not with them, but just helping with this missing types campaign that they had, I learned that, you know, one bag can save up to three lives. So you donate one bag in your eight to 10 minutes, it can have an, a direct outcome on someone's life. Three so people. I would say, yeah, three, three people. Yeah, that's crazy, right? One bag, your eight to 10 minutes, you on your way. You don't know that you just saved three people's lives because you just took the time to donate. So that, that's, that's what I would say. Uh, we have Andrew on the line right now. Andrew, good morning. How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? What's up, Mr. Slay? Uh, doing well, thank you. You wanted to comment on um, blood transfusions. How did it impact your life? Ooh, uh, it impacted my life huge. Um, when my wife gave birth to our daughter um, about 18 months ago, um, the birth went well. Uh, it was after we got home. Um, they left a little bit of the um, placenta, I think, um, inside, which caused um, her to bleed a lot. Um, and she lost so much blood from the time that um, it started till we got to the hospital um, that they had to uh, give her blood. Um, and then after the surgery, the doctor who did the surgery cut her um, 
you know, coming back out after getting that little piece. Um, and we got back home um, and she started bleeding again. But this time it was even worse. Um, but both times she she could have died if it weren't for people who donate um, blood um, because of the amount of blood that they, that they had to give her um, in order for her to, you know, come back and, 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 and come back and be normal. Mm -hmm. um, everything's good now. She's good now. But um, I just wanted to thank everybody who does donate because it is it is huge. Um, yeah. I could have lost my wife if, 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 if it weren't for people who donate blood. So. Do, do you donate now, Andrew? Yes, sir, I do. Yes, okay. Sir, I do. Thank you for sharing that story, and I'm glad your wife is still with us. And I know there's a you. lot of stories like that out there. And uh, Blaze Eppinger, thank you, too, for sharing your story. Uh, you want to give out your social? People want to reach you directly, Blaze? Um, my Instagram is Blaze Armand. And, um, yeah, that's how you can reach me on Instagram. And, Sway, I'm trying to get this Five Fingers of Death freestyle. You, you ain't know. ready, kid. <laughs> I am. <laughs> you, <laughs> you trying to come up and put it down? I am, but undoubtedly. Okay. I can give you my Instagram, slide just the music, whatever. Okay. I can watch stories, logic, everybody. I'm ready. Oh, you ready like that. Okay, well, talk to like Kelly that. about it. We'll, 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 we'll bring you up, man. Okay. We'll bring you yes, up. Sir, thank you. All right, and, sir. And, and thank Sway, you. before we get off, Amer uh, the American Red Cross has a great program that's happening, the Missing the missing Type Campaign. And before you leave, Dr. Grimmer, can you just briefly tell us about the Missing Type Campaign that you all have? Yes. Um, what we're doing is we're uh, in a lot of corporations and uh, individuals are eliminating the A, the O, and the B in their logos and in their names to point out to everyone that we need blood and those are the blood types that we're missing and it's summer and we get about 20 percent of our blood donations come from schools from colleges and uh, high schools and all those schools are on break and so we we really need blood in the summer and we need blood all the time the red cross transfuses about uh 13 000 units a day and uh, of red cells and 2500 units of platelets a day so I think, you know, it's, it's wonderful uh, to be interested and to go in and try. And I think what we have is we have people who donate again and again because it becomes important to them and they know that they're helping people. And I think if, if you at least try to donate, you might find that you feel good. You're doing something really important for your community. And we're all connected, yes. you know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Kathleen Grimmer, uh, medical officer for Red Cross. Uh, is, there, is there a platform that people could go online to check out more information? Yeah, you can uh, download the Red Cross blood donor app. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to redcrossblood.org. Uh, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Uh, okay. All those things. You'll find us, and it's easy to donate. If you can't donate and you want to do a blood drive, you can uh there's also a blood drive app thank you very much thank okay. you kelly thank you how can they reach you you can reach me on all platforms kelly kincaid k-e-l-l-y-k-i-n-k-a-i-d thank you okay.